I was watching a lecture by um, Edelman, the guy who wrote that great book on neural Darwinism a few years ago. And one of the things that came up in the course of this lecture, it wasn't the main topic, was that he said something like, uh, perceiving is creating, or seeing is creating. It was that kind of a sentiment he was expressing anyway. And uh, I was really impressed by that. I thought that's a really insightful thing to say, really. I think there's a lot of mileage in pursuing that analogy, or um, correspondence, I suppose, between the mechanisms by which our organs of sense uh, carry out acts of perception and those other routines that our brain, our bodies, our culture seems to do, which produce, um, which create objects and artifacts and inventions and those kind of things. Uh, and I think the similarity, I think that correspondence is borne out by uh, some of the mechanisms that, uh, that, you, that you can identify within both those uh, within both those processes, the perceptual process and the creative process. I mean, in a general sense, you know, just um, you know, the fact that we are, um, as human beings, we do seem to have access to a kind of unified consciousness. We experience the world as, as relatively holistic, as joined up, as, uh, as, 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 an, as a, an entity that kind of makes sense. I mean, that in itself, to me, is a, is a is kind of significant in the sense that uh, you know there's no reason, there's no real reason why it should be like that. Uh, obviously, all this data is coming in through all different senses. It's being processed in different parts of the brain, and yet the uh, uh, the end result of all that process is this kind of unified whole. So it's an incredibly, um, if nothing else, it's a kind of binding process. Uh, and I think as, a, as one of a series of processes that are involved in, in perception, that binding process is one that's very, very much part of the fabric of creative practices, creativity in the arts, creativity in the sciences, creativity in industry and, and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, a lot of the, the language of those processes uh, is to do with bringing together apparently disparate pieces of information and making some kind of gestalt, some kind of consistent, holistic entity out of that, which is what our senses do with the world all the time. Uh, and other kinds of processes as well, uh, selection processes. A lot of uh, creativity in the arts and sciences, again, is to do with um, ruthless selection and careful choice and uh, identification of uh, particularly salient aspects of whatever it is you're working with. Uh, I used to talk to my students about this, and we had this kind of slogan, which was to do with create with abandon and select with care, and that's, uh, I think, absolutely fundamental to to all creative processes. Generate lots of ideas, generate lots of material, have lots of material, give yourself lots of information, and then find process of for winnowing the less useful stuff away. And again, I think that's what's happening in perception. There's lots and lots and lots of things um, that are out there in the world um, that are you know, giving me information, but I'm not seeing 99% of it, or, or probably more than that, I don't know. But a heck of a lot of it is not being selected. It's not becoming part of the, the architecture of my experience. Uh, the what comes out as my as, as, as my perceive as the perceived world is the result of very very ruthless editing processes. Again, as I say, mirroring uh, creative processes. And there are a number of other I think there are a number of other processes going on. And in terms of perception or data processing, uh, I've talked before, for example, in these videos about Newberg uh, New and Dickley's idea of connect with, uh, cognitive operators. Uh, and, if, and if those aren't quite right, then some of the kinds of mechanisms must be in operation in the brain by which data is, is processed in certain ways, abstracted, turned into metaphors, um, turned into, uh, reduced to binary oppositions, uh, enumerated, given emotional uh, valences. 
So all those things that happen in um, in cognitive processes, and include, including things like the attribution of agency, all those things that cognitive processes do to the data of the world and turn it into lived experience, are also in operation in creative processes. And I think that's also evident, as I say, in uh, in some of the the formal mechanisms by which those things are uh, kind of made conscious and, and built within kind of teaching or training schedules. So, for example, within a lot of creativity training, there is mechanisms like scamper, like triz, like uh, synectic triggers. These are all uh, techniques, creativity te cre t techniques for enhancing uh, creativity or uh, finding ways to make creativity flow better in groups, those kind of ideas. Uh, and again, the, the details of those map quite closely onto the details of what the brain is doing, what cognition is doing to data to turn it into lived experience. So, for example, in synectic triggers, which is a kind of a set of questions that you ask of a piece of material that you're working on in order to generate ideas from that piece of material, it's all to do with things like you know, can you substitute part of it for something else? Can you juxtapose it with something else? Can you reduce it to simpler elements? Can you change its scale? Can you turn it into a metaphor? And those, as I say, those processes are quite analogous to uh, something like cognitive operators or cognitive operations more generally. Well, that's all I've got to say on that, really. It just seems to me this thing that Edelman said about perception being creative is, is very astute, I think. There's a lot of parallels between the very mundane, not mundane, but the very routine uh, processes that all of us, the, the, uh, the least creative amongst us, like myself at times, uh, all those processes that we do just by creating the world use the same mechanisms, I think, as the most creative amongst us, producing great works of art, great theories in science, fantastic inventions, brilliant business models, all of those kind of things.